In this video, I tour Tar Heel Farms, a lavender farm in Scotland. I learned the processes of growing the lavender and extracting the oils. It was a wonderful experience and I can't wait for you to enjoy with me. So let's go tour Tar Heel Farms. Hi, I hope you're on a wonderful day. Listen, it's Mac here today. I'm in Scotland in Tar Heel Farms. Behind me is some English lavender and right in front of me is some French lavender. I'm going to show it to you. This is a lavender farm. I've already bought some oils. There's so much to see here. Let's go check it out. Here is a, just a small field of wildflowers. When you get wildflowers bunched in together like this, they look really beautiful. You can see the color combination there. It almost looks like the American flag, but there's some yellow in there as well. As you can imagine, the smells are just overwhelming because there's just so much lavender. And I've also never seen this many bees here in the UK. In Skyland, there are a lot of bees up here, but it's also to be expected. All of these blooms are putting out so much fragrance and their coloration is absolutely magnificent. So this is more lavender, and the great thing about this lavender farm is that you see it's planted on the hillside, and that allows for great drainage, which is lavender needs. It can't sit in pots, it can't hold a lot of water around those roots. And then of course, the last thing is the variety. You have to have the right varieties that are growing in your environment. I've never had a lot of success growing lavender at home, which is why I come to farms like this. I love lavender. I love the smell of the essential oils. Essential oils have been processed for about 2,000 years. Lavender has been a part of that. So this John's. farm is also growing, yes, a nice selection of St. John's wort. St. John wort is a historical medicinal plant with a lot of property, beneficial properties, but it could have some downsides to it as well. So you want to check with a doctor before you try to ingest any of it or take it as a pill or anything of that sort. So check with your local professionals on that. But as a plant that grows in a garden, it is really beautiful. I love the yellow coloration, just a nice clean yellow color, five petals, looks really beautiful. So here is a really old bug hotel, bug hostel, bug house, and this is for those beneficial bugs, mostly solitary bees and other insects. And this one needs to be refurbished, but what you do is you set these up, put those sticks in there, and those bees go in, and they're able to lay their brood, produce, and then come back out. And I just saw what appears to be a bee or a wasp go inside of one of those. So this is still actually active. It's an old one, but it's really perfectly located right here with the wildflowers, the fields of wildflowers, and of course, all of the beautiful English lavender and lavender. As a Mediterranean plant, you can find lavender all over the Mediterranean. It is so unusual to be able to find it here in Scotland, to have find not just one plant, but an entire lavender farm. It's truly a unique undertaking. So they're gonna talk about that a little bit here, and I wanna go find out a little bit more about how they're producing lavender here in Scotland. So these are two types of lavender. These are a little bit bold, they've been for a few tours. Um, this is a more accurate representation of our French lavender. And this is a more accurate representation of our English lavender. Like I mentioned, today's the first harvest of English lavender. And um, so we're slowly going to bring them to the distillery and make that oils today. But the Latin name for our English lavender is Lavendula angustifolia. So in Latin, angusti pointy folia leaf. And if you cross hybrid lavendula angustifolia with the spike lavender, you get lavendula cross intermedia. So basically, this is our English lavender, or obviously, this is Scottish, and this one's our French lavender over here. So, visually, uh, color is a really big distinguisher. The French one has become a lot more purple recently, and it's more of a bloom. But the best way to distinguish is the English one is a more intense purple, the French one is a little bit more fainter. Well, now that we're starting to harvest, the English one is looking a bit more fainter as well. Uh, and the main difference is that the French one yields two times as much oil than our English one. Because it's got the spike lavender in its hybrid, it also allows the French one to flower as well. Um, but the real distinguisher is in the scent. So whenever you guys are all ready, if you want to come down, grab one of the English and one of the French. We'll distinguish in the scent and that's the real word. The best way to tell you. Once you've done that, hopefully everyone can smell different. <laughs> 
It's a really nice tour. They've explained the growing conditions, how to best test it to get the scents out of it. And now we're walking to the distillery, which this is the part that I wanted to see the most. Actually, how do they distill the oils out of the lavender blooms? <laughs> I've never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. Once we grow in the herb garden, they're distilled in these stills here. Um, yeah, we'll be fine with that. Um, um, so this is the main one we use, especially for our lavender. So this is um, a copper still. It's got a few main parts to it, um, but overall, like once you go through it, it's quite simple. So there's a hot part here. So the kettle, steaming chamber, and the pipe here are all very hot. And then the condenser or the cooling tank is really cold and we kind of describe that as a lambic. And so what we'll do is we will get our kettle um, with water in it and it kind of does, you know, as any kettle would do, it boils the water. And that will create steam that will kind of rise up and we'll have our plants in here. I'll kind of make a basket full of these plants here. We'll put them in here and the steam will rise up and burst little pockets of oil that are in the plants. You'll see kind of when they flower, that's when the um, pockets are kind of opened up. So if you see any flowers, you'll get a lot of oil from that because um, the flowers are open. Um, and the oil will come out as a vapour from the plants and it will go up because it's really hot with the steam. It'll go up through this pipe and then down we've got um, the water here and there's kind of like a swirly pipe which gives it time to go from a gas up here and then it comes out here as a liquid and we kind of ground made this um model so we've got some shoot and this is kind of what it would look like when it's running we will actually start running it later on today probably but um yeah because this is our first harvest day and then what will come out at the end of that is kind of something similar to this so you've got here on the top you've got the lavender oil, and then you've got the lavender water or the hydrosol. And if you if you shake it and not drop it, um, you'll see within about ten to twenty seconds, you'll see that it starts to form back on top like that, um, because the oil will sit on top, and that also helps with separating the oil as well. Um, I don't know. Charlie, can you help open that? Yeah, um, I'll give this to you guys to um, pass around. For other plants that we grow on the farm, so chamomile, mint, and rosemary. Um, and you'll also kind of see these kind of cells on French or Bulgarian farms. Um, we use copper because it creates a perfume grey oil, whereas the stainless steel ones, they'll kind of be um, still a good oil, but more used for things like floor cleaners. If you've had ever seen like the lavender scented floor cleaners, things like that. We produce about 10 litres of oil in a season, but we have had answers like, I think a guy earlier said 5,000 litres. So, um, yeah. yeah, so only 10 litres, and we give 2 litres of that to a company called Utah. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a Scottish planning company, I think it's sold in Superdrug. But basically, if anyone's ever used self plants, it's very like, the steak smell and they wanted to have like a nice lavender smell to kind of cover that scent so we give two litres of our oil to them a year and the rest of it we use in our products and um, so in like our soaps um lavender water sprays and um obviously our perfumes as well so we're going to do a different type of seeing it now this is literally just the open water that we use it's just like the ice cold bath yeah it's it's not pressurized, it's just atmospheric because um, I think it would not highly in terms of but I think it might be but it was a pressurized system so that there, the gauge up there is just Wow, that was so educational to learn about how they actually process the oils. I didn't know that much detail. That is so wonderful to learn. So guys, this has been such a wonderful experience. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, take care.